Well, hey, everybody, Ranger Nick. You know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This gig of doing Ranger Nick has got me to interact with some of the most incredible people, and I mentioned at the top of the segment that there is an individual, this lady right here, Dr. Temple Grandin, who is world-renowned, changed animal agriculture in terms of cow comfort and also with swine. Dr. Grandin, thank you so much for joining me. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. She is in Georgia along with Allie Merck. Allie is a 4-H youth development professional. Allie, good morning and good thanks. Good morning. Thanks for coming. We are at Allie's farm and Dr. Grandin, I'm going to ask you if you would to critique in a non-personal way <laughs> Allie's farm and her animal handling area here. What might you do to improve this with your unique ability to see in pictures as though the animal would see it. What would now, you, you do? You want me to talk about the, um, the, the things the animal sees? Well, basically, it's where people stand. Mm -hmm. And you don't want all the cattle piling in there all at once. You can move back and forth, kind of work the point of balance going in. Uh, one of the things I want to change is getting rid of putting poles in behind the so, livestock. Okay, let's say I put a pole in here right here. I want to get rid of doing this. It's really dangerous okay. because what can happen? Well, say I'm putting that in and the cow backs up. Where's this pole go? Yeah. All right. Enemy, yeah. yeah. Or it flies up and hits you in the in the head. Okay. And now there's a lot of good sliding gates that are now available, and I want to eliminate poles behind cattle. There's okay. just been way too many accidents. Okay. People get injured. Cattle also get injured. And what about when an animal comes into an area like this, coming into the chute, and they're by themselves? Do you have a problem with that, or should they be in a group? Well, lone animal, you have to be mm. careful. And okay. where a lone animal hurts somebody is not in here, but in a group area, where they're in an open area, you've got a single animal going berserk because it wants to get back with its buddies. Mm -hmm. That's the animal that hurts people and it also breaks equipment. Yes, ma'am, and it's often like working with people, giving them a chance to settle down, get accustomed to things around them. Dr. Gannon, what I wanna do next is talk about people safety, and so let's wrap this part and then talk about people safety okay. next, okay? Okay, so Dr. Grandin walked us through the idea of animal comfort out here, and Allie and I are got a one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Grandin. Very, very fortunate to have this. Dr. Grandin, looking at this shoot area right here, what are some things you notice from a personal people safety side to keep us all safe when we're working with these cattle? Well, the first thing we want to look at is the latch on the head gate, okay. because if that um, uh, comes undone, the lever can fly up, hit you, the animal could jump out on you. Uh, so maintenance of latches is really important. I might consider replacing this head gate. Okay. And the That's other okay. thing Absolutely. that other thing I want to say is uh, maintenance of the latching devices. Mm. Also, the head gate should work fairly easily. If you have to be, you know, Godzilla gorilla to operate the head gate, that's not very good from a safety standpoint or from a getting a tired uh, standpoint. And I'll ask this too, Dr. Grandin, I've read in some of your work, even sometimes an individual that's standing out near cattle with a different colored hat on or a different colored jacket can really make them uncomfortable. You have an ability to watch those animals and make recommendations like that to change that. Is that right? Well, when you have a shoot like this with open sides on it, People handling the cattle have got to stay away from it, okay. except when it's time to move them. Now, when you back up and you get out of the flight zone, the cattle will calm right down. Mm -hmm. But you do not want to just stand in that flight zone. Then you only enter that flight zone to move them. Right. And the rest of the time, you stand outside it. But then you do have to work on them here. And that's where maybe you might experiment with some cardboard to sort of on the back half of that so they don't see you so much they're working on them. Yeah. Well, one of the things that Dr. Grandin has an ability to do is think like these animals. I want to take us to our last part together today and ask Dr. Grandin here about her role with Allie in working with youth. I didn't have a chance to grow up around livestock, but so many youth do. And I want to talk about that with Dr. Grandin next. So let's go there. Well, I tell y'all, one of the things that's so special about today is getting to interact with Dr. Grandin and Allie, and we've been talking about Allie's farm and things to improve. One of the things that I want y'all to know is not only is this lady a world-renowned scientist, but she also has autism. And Ray D'Alessio, one of our producers and anchors on the show, has a son with a mild case of autism. And, and Dr. Grandin, I mentioned that because you have a special ability to see things in pictures and to see things the way no one else does, and you have enabled your skill set to change agriculture worldwide. That is an incredible feat. You got started with agriculture as a child, and I want you to tell the folks at home, what would you encourage youth to do 
that have these different abilities like you do in terms of getting them where they want to go? What would your advice be? First of all, we got to get them off the video games, get them off the <laughs> devices, and 4-H and FFA are great uh, venues for doing this. Yes, uh, I was in 4-H horse program, and my high school had dairy cattle, and then when I was 15, I went out to my aunt's ranch. I was introduced to beef when I was a teenager, which brings up another really important thing that students get interested in things they get exposed to. You find out what you like, you find out what you don't like. We got to get them out doing things. Uh, and being a visual thinker, I tend to notice detail. So the first thing that I did in looking at cattle being handled at Arizona feedlots, this would have been back in the 70s, is I noticed they'd stop at a shadow. They'd stop, there was a vehicle parked alongside a chute or a coat on a fence, or maybe your own shadow in there moving. I want to get people working with cattle to be more observant. Yeah. Other thing you got to do is to calm down and just use slight motion of your body to get the animals to go forward or back, working the point of balance. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I know you have been influenced by as a great mentor, and I know that Allie Merck is a wonderful mentor to so many 4-H'ers in Georgia. Dr. Grandin, I just want to say thank you so much for spending your day with me. Allie, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so, so much for the work you're doing, both what you ladies are doing. This has been really inspirational this month, and I hope it's touched you as well. You all know what to do. First of all, I want to tell you, go online and look this lady up and all the wonderful things. She's got a movie about her. She's got best-selling books. Emmys are associated with that movie, incredible stuff. Look Dr. Grandin up. While you're online, check out the Farm Monitor Facebook page and the Ranger Nick Facebook page. And until next time for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick reminding you, as I always say, Dr. Grandin, that enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching this really special edition, and we'll look forward to seeing you when we get back together again next month. See ya.